Hey everyone, welcome to Life on the Hulls. Last week I removed the companionway from the starboard hull of the catamaran and, uh, and began reinforcing it for a final fit. Um, this video is pretty much a start to finish of that process. There's a lot goes on here, the, the reinforcement, the demolding, and then final uh, adjustments at the end. So I hope you enjoy this video. Please don't forget to like it and subscribe and I'm gonna get into it. Now it's so important to round off these corners here because if you don't, you're not going to get the glass to lay down properly. So it's just a block sander. Just take the edge off these corners. So after a bit of templating and a little bit of uh, sanding, I'm, I'm now ready to uh, install the 300 CSM. Now this is actually catalyzed at 2%, so it's what I'd call a hot coat. It uh, enables a really quick uh, set, and then I'm ready to basically laminate the further reinforcements. I'll discuss those a little bit as I go on here, uh, reasoning as to why I've put certain laminates in certain places is very important in an area that's copying a lot of traffic. That was a bit of an epic session. Um, what I've done is essentially I've put one layer of 300, a layer of 600 uh, on top of these foam core um, pads that I've put on the stair treads. Now the other thing I've done too is I've striped uh, all of the edges here. So for instance, this edge here now has a strip around 70 mils wide all the way along it of 600 double bias. So I've effectively reinforced all of these uh, edges with an extra strip 70 mil wide of 600 double bias. I'm going to leave it tonight because it's dark and it's getting cold. And nothing's going to go off tonight, uh, not in any hurry. So pretty much I've done all the face of that to a level of satisfaction. I'm going to come back in the morning and I'm going to give it a sand. And while I've still got a chemical interaction, I'm going to then give it another layer of 600 double bias all over it, a layer of 300, and then another layer possibly of 1200 quad. I want that face there to be so strong because it is a staircase and it's gonna have a lot of pounding on it. It's gonna be people up and down it a thousand times a day. And, uh, and on a boat, often you're a little bit not sure footed and you tend to step a lot heavier than you would otherwise on a normal set of stairs, especially if the boat comes up to meet you as you're coming down the stairs. So there's a lot going on there, uh, a lot of structure needed and I think I've pretty much achieved what I need there now, but I'm going to beef it up just that face just to make sure that I don't get any potential problems down the line. Back in the day when they would have made these uh, modules, they would have just got a chopper gun and put, you know, six or seven mils of, uh, of chopped matting on there and maybe one layer of cloth. Uh, I'm trying to do it, I probably would have been made in about an hour. I'm probably into about four days of work on this little fella here, but you know, I want to make sure that this thing's as strong as hell and it'll obviously be a lot lighter too, but also uh, reinforced in areas it needs to be and not where it doesn't need to be. G'day guys, Saturday morning, it is cold today. We've had three days now of um, 100 kilometer an hour winds. I mean, just vicious winds. I've been down every morning with my binoculars, sort of just on my, my moorings around about 300 metres from the wharf, so I can only just see it, uh, and it's hidden behind another big cat, so I'm looking at Interim down here, it's swaying like this in the wind, but it's not moving after my fiasco last week. And before you can start laminating again, I want to work with that chemistry, because it's been so cold last night, the, uh, the chemistry's still there, so let's keep working with it. Um, you can't just come in and smack straight onto it unless I'd peel ply the whole thing, which I didn't because I was in a hurry to get out of here. So I'm going to have to give it a light sand with a block sander, take any rough edges off it, and then I'll be able to get straight back into it. So that's my plan today. So I'm really happy with how this has come up. It's uh, it's rock solid. There's you know, So what we've got now is um, these modules, I only ever made them up in three layers of, two layers of CSM and a layer of cloth. So essentially under here, there's 300, 300, 450 double bias, uh, 300 again, and then the foam core, and then we've got 300, and then 600 double bias, and then another strip coat of 600 along these edges here, which is where the 
the, ultimately the pressure is going to be and I intend to do at least another two on each of these edges here so there's quite a lot going on in here this is around about um, probably 25 to 30 mil thick now each of these stair treads which is definitely capable of handling the sort of pressure I'm expecting it to um, but what I'm going to do is put another full coat of 600 over the whole lot and then I'll strip coat again these uh, these edges and then we'll test it and see if it's okay if not I'll do some more now the only problem with work of sanding resin that is just been laid up or within a couple of days is when you sand it you fill your sandpaper with the the residue resin um, so along here basically just sanding it here it's going to be sticky and it's hard to sand when it hasn't cured but you sort of want to keep on with it so you've got to make the effort to get on with it Yeah, you know, I said I'd use a block sander. Well, that's not gonna happen. That's 600 double bias is like giant knives and, and just sanding the back while it's still green is near on impossible. So it's back to my roll sander for this. Okay, so I just wanna highlight something. I, I just sanded that top stair tread for two minutes with my roller sander. And obviously there's a lot of heat and a lot of friction going on. And uh, and because the fiber, because the glass or the laminate's still green, which means that it's still in sort of a tacky stage, I guess. It looks like it's set, feels like it's set, it's still a bit tacky. Um, that's the end result. Now your rollers, uh, these these things here, I buy these from the UK because there's nowhere cost effectively here in Australia to buy them, and I actually buy about ten boxes of them at a time. Uh, in Australia, that was three bucks each. I get these for about oh, eighty cents each from the UK, and uh, and I buy about ten boxes at a time. And anyone that's going to visit my wife's uh, family, Janet, her family's up in Northern England. And uh, these poor buggers get a delivery about every six months or so of, of boxes of these things. And then the poor next courier, my next sand sandpaper mule, uh, is required to bring them home. And my daughter Ellen has just returned from Europe. She went on a trip to uh, Greece and Slovenia, Croatia, came back with a suitcase full of these. And the poor girl, when she arrived at the airport last week, we went to pick her up. She's walking through the customs hall, came out into the, into the, uh, the terminal, and we're all excited to see her. And guess what? Luggage has gone missing. I was devastated. I said, what was in there? She goes, all oh, my clothes and everything. I said, what about my sandpaper? What about my sandpaper? Luckily, two days later, it showed up. Fortunately, she had to run to miss a flight or to, to avoid missing a flight in Frankfurt. And the bag came two days later. But anyway, I got my stash. Got my stash of sandpaper. She's my mule. She's my uh, sandpaper mule. You can see here um, the amount of planning that's involved here. What I'm planning to do is stripe coat all of the edges. So a lot of strip cutting, very important that I get these things reinforced correctly before I do one complete overlay. There's no point in putting 10 layers of glass on some of these flat areas like the top here because that's going to be glassed down to the actual bridge deck. And particularly around here where this hatch is in the bottom of the floor here. Um, there's no point in me re-laminating this area here. It's just a waste of resin, waste of cloth. That's going to be cut out and become a hatch. So I'm strategically positioning all of these strips here and then I'll give it a styrene wipe and then I'll be able to just simply glass them on. Um, <clears throat> yeah, a lot of sort of initial planning here uh, goes into doing a laminate like this. As I said, years gone by, you would have just used a chopper gun, put seven or eight millimetres of... Uh, a solid glass or five or six millimeters of solid glass on here and then that would have been the module but nowadays we're trying to reinforce for strength minimize weight and, uh, and minimize the amount of resin used obviously now you're all sick of looking at this module but this is a start to finish uh, video so essentially when you look at this here this part here is still chopped meeting now that's going to be cut out 
That's actually a hatch, but this here would be, I would imagine, and I'd like to get a, uh, a feeler a gauge on it. I think it would be around about five or six millimeters. So that's, but it's not five or six millimeters of chopped matting. It's five or six millimeters of um, of quadraxials and biaxials. So it's very, very strong. That, that there is probably about ten times tougher than uh, than it uh, than it would be if it was just straight solid chopped matting. When I set out on this project to start to photograph and video everything that I do, um, I never realized how important those videos and those little clips that I have would be in the later part of the build. Now, I've just come across something by reviewing some footage. I was editing a video on making the black water tanks um, and I came up across a piece of video where I was actually installing this module and putting it in place. By recording that, I was able to then, rather than lift this thing back up into the mold, bring it back down to finish the laminating, I was then able to work out exactly where I needed the foam. And I've just discovered I need foam down there. So that's one of the really amazing things about recording this whole series is that I've got this review process that I can go back to and go, ah, oh, yes, that's what I need, rather than having to go through a whole day's work to get the thing back up there, bring it back down, laminate it out. So what I've come up with, and uh, I've used a couple of slithers of foam, like that piece there and this piece here are essentially offcuts, and I've been able to get this done in like five minutes, glue it down, I'll be able to laminate this afternoon. So. Uh, that's going to go there and here. She's sitting on top of the chamfer panel where the steps go down, and that part was there, but in fact, it is actually hanging. Uh, so that means two things. Uh, the first thing is that by, by it hanging, it needs ultimately a lot of support. So it's going to need a similar lam laminate to the stair tread there. Uh, I thought it was actually going to be glassed down onto the, the physical bridge deck, but because it's hanging, uh, it's going to need exactly the same laminate that those stairs are going to need. And the other thing to remember is that this entire section here, along the sides, gets glassed to the bulkhead. Same on the other side. So. It's got side support. It doesn't need any further blocking underneath because there's two bulkheads, one on each side of that uh, that module there. But there's also um, that platform or that landing on the top of the stairs. Now will be foam core. It'll be rock solid. It'll be stronger than uh, as strong as the bulkhead, or if not stronger by the time I finish laminating it. And you know I don't have to bring it back here and do it again. So yep, great idea videoing all. these edges are <laughs> like. so I got the bedding compound gonna whack this one on just one of those quick jobs I can get done in a hurry um, just really glad that I was able to review that footage because it really helped me uh, see exactly what was needed um, it's it's really interesting how I've sort of had to wing a lot of this uh, although I have plans and everything um, it'd be interesting to see how guys building boats from scratch from actual plans, how much retro fitting and how much um, sort of interpretation they need to make on a, a physical set of plans that's handed to them when they're, you know, because I can't imagine this sort of detail is in in every set of plans. I've studied plans before and then, you know, there's no way they're getting the level of detail needed. So I can see why builds take five, 10, 15 years to get done. Hopefully mine doesn't. <laughs> I finished laminating this um, module yesterday. Did a uh, oh, big day. I think I've actually spent about two and a half days just doing all the foam core, the laminating, and getting, making sure that everything's reinforced where I needed to do. I'm gonna have a bit of a peel ply session here. I'm just gonna rip it all off. I've got to work on how to demold it. Although it is released and demolded, I had to go back and repair some areas back onto the mould. So I taped it up and did all the right things and uh, I've now got to work out a way of getting it off because I've removed my grab loops to be able to pull it up and lift it off the actual surface of the mould. So first things first, going to rip all the peel ply off and then uh, get it down to how it looks good and then I can start trimming off the excesses down here where I've had to do these repairs, because when I originally bought it off, I actually cut it to get it off, uh, trying to repair it back on the mold rather than having to do it in situ in the boat.
Okay, although this has been demolded once before, um, these areas around here, I actually had to cut them away oh, two years ago when I made this, or 18 months ago when I made this actual module. I had to cut it away to get it to release off the mold. The mold has uh, no sort of relief Sent to allow an upward lift. It, it was actually dead vertical, so I did have a lot of difficulty getting it off. Therefore, I've re-glassed, I've actually taped it, waxed it, re-glassed it, but it's now gripping because it's uh, it's got a better hold on it. And unfortunately, that means I've got to sort of use wedges and hammers and things to get it out. You can't, uh, you can't rush this because it'll destroy your product. If I look a bit stressed, then you'd be right. <sighs> Mate, I've been going at this for two hours. Um, the issue with this mould is that it's got that many vertical surfaces and there's absolutely no angle of relief. So whoever made it, you know, if ever you're making moulds, try to always have some sort of a release angle so you can pull it straight up. Um, I remember how hard it took me. I think it took me half a day to get it off originally when I first made it. Now I've put it back on and I've reinforced it all. Um, I've been trying to lever it. Now, because it's got all these bloody big flanges that then get glass to the bulkheads, um, you can't physically get under it with any wedges. I've had wedges, I've had everything sort of just under the edges, but I can't physically get under the stair treads and it needs to lift vertically, not sort of away. So um, I've come up with this sort of a nightmare. Um, look, I didn't want to bastardise it again, but I've almost had to. Down here, I've had to cut... Now this, this edge here actually gets glass to a bulkhead, same with that. So it's not decorative, um, and even the top of it's not, because it's going to have proper flooring on it or the cabin sole. So what I've done is I've cut away these little reliefs here, which I had to do last time. I don't know why the hell I thought I'd get away with it. And I've lifted it an inch already just by, I've cut three of these. I've got one here. There's another one over here, up on the top. Now you can see here, there's, there's like, honestly, I've got it an inch off. But where it's catching is because it's so substantial now, and it's probably about half an inch thick on these corners, I've made sure that they're never going to crack, they're never going to break. I mean, they're probably as thicker than the boat hull. Um, there's one there, and then, then I've put another one down in here uh, just so I can get some purchase on it. Now I'm leaving it up. The whole mould wants to come with it, so I'm going to have to get some boys in to give me a hand, I think. It's just to the point where I just cannot get it off. I'm not getting a heart attack material. Excuse the French, but Excuse. I have been swearing in here. If I'd been filming it, honestly, YouTube would probably take me off the channel because of the amount of profanity that's been going on here. But, uh, yep, the blood, sweat, swearing and tears. Well, the swearing's been happening here, I'm telling you. I think I've got it. Um... <laughs> Don't forget, never use steel or anything. I've uh, I've had the hammer, I've had the wedges, but you know, a bit of wood with a bit of wedge on it, you know, some soft pine or something like this. So it's probably still going to damage the mould, but you know, at least I can polish that out. But um, this in here, You can see down the bottom here now, I've actually got the point where I could probably get something underneath that. That's been the problem, there's been, there's been no way of getting under the mongrel. That's just sheer determination on my behalf. <laughs> I've stood here for two hours. Freaking sweat my head off! Oh God for that. Okay. <laughs> you can call me anything you like, but don't call me undetermined. <sighs>
heavy now. That'll look, eh? Okay, I know it doesn't look any different, but I can already feel a massive difference in the strength of it. Um, there's just absolutely no give in any of this now. And I know now that all I have to do is uh, give it a buff, give it a buff, give it a clean, and it's ready to install. So that's the first of about six. <laughs> but I won't be putting any of the other ones on the mold. Um, I think that would be probably a little bit uh, a little bit unwise i don't really need to as long as i keep the shape of them so i think i'll brace them with bits of wood and things like that just to to uh to maintain the shape but you can see over there all the repairs i had to do on the side there now that actually gets glassed onto the onto the bulkhead so that's really not going to matter that's going to be behind a piece of trim and uh and nicely glassed on but yep no pretty happy with that it's as heavy as hell now uh probably still nowhere near as heavy as the original ones were because this you got to remember that this is now uh made of reinforced cloth uh reinforcements rather than chop matting <sighs> i just got it to the top of the stairs on my own uh there's boys around but everyone's so busy and i've just got to get it in so you just got to be a freaking forklift um <sighs> it's actually quite funny um look i'm risking damaging it i love the fact of getting it done on my own Myself. <laughs> My wife saw me do this, I'll be the deep shit. <sighs> and to make matters worse, I've got to move the camera like 14 times for every shot. There's definitely a few fitment issues here. Uh, I think this floor here, I've never actually cut it out, so I'm gonna go and have a bit of a break because I'm a bit cactus after that. Um, the one thing I haven't done is, is removed a circle here for the, the, um, the step here, but yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a fiddle, but once I get it in place, I'll be able to actually use it to get down into there rather than slide nothing down, so that's actually a good win, but yep. After much working out, I've got to uh, adjust this piece of floor. I thought I had it right, but uh, with good job, you do many fitments because uh, nothing's changed. It's just that now the floors are actually down in position. I've worked out that I need to remove a bit off this, uh, the end of this piece of sole, just to get this thing to sit down exactly as it is. You've got to remember, I've just added about a centimeter of thickness to the actual module and uh, to this module here. So therefore, I then need to adjust here. So there's a whole lot of things you've got to think about. Don't ever rush out and get things down because if you do, you're going to come back and you're going to have little humps and steps. I'm trying to get the whole thing dead level. Uh, it's been a bit of a process, but um, I'm going to go in there now and cut that piece of sole out. Oh, it's going to be nice to have a set of stairs. Sweet. Oh, mate. I'm dreaming for that day. Dreaming for that day. <sighs>
Check this out. I can actually walk down the stairs. I've got all the levels exactly right. So it's still a bit, uh, a bit rigged, but oh, no more shimmying up and down. That bloody chamfer metal. That is gold. Yeah. So it's time now to cut out the hatch in the bottom of my companionway here. Um, now that I'm able to use this staircase, although it's not glued in place or glassed in place, I'm able now to traffic up and down it. What I need to do is remove the hatch stinter out of there so that I can get access to my black water tank, my water surfaces and my bilge pump. I'm going to use a multi-tool and uh, the new cutting tools that you can buy now, uh, I've actually got a brand here called Diablo, I guess they're called. They've got a, actually a... Uh, uh, tungsten or a carbon tip on them, so they're great for cutting fiberglass, they never never wear out. The access now down in this hatch here, so I've got access onto that, uh, onto that sewer tank there, and, uh, and down into the build. So like I've done with all the other modules, I'm going to give it a good clean with some methylated spirits, and then I'm going to put some masking tape around the edges of the stair treads and anywhere where it's likely to get chipped. Because the last thing you want to do is get a boat finished and then go back and spend you know, another six months fixing all the little chips. There's going to be a lot of chips, trying to avoid as many as possible. I'm going to give this module a good clean. Now, of course, I'm going to be using this and trafficking up and down at 100,000 times. Um, I'm probably going to cut cardboard templates and glue them down as well, just like they do in a factory, to, to try to protect the, uh, the surface so that ultimately when I come to finish the boat, it's going to be a lot less work in the long run. So um, this, this cleaning stuff, this methylated spirits, I'm not sure you can buy this in the US um, or in Europe, but methylated spirits is pretty readily available. It's, uh, it's a bit hard to drink though. You, they sort of put a, a new additive in it so you can't get it, get it, add a bit of milk to it and go for it. Uh, this is pretty cheap, it's like three bucks for two litres. Of, for, you know, it's as cheap as chips, so um, that's one of the reasons why they've um, yeah, put that additive in it to make you feel sick if you drink it. 